says it's going. Let's see here in a minute. All right, we are live, super exciting. Uh, today I'm here with some fantastic folks that make some amazing things happen with our Art for Life program that uh, the Arts Council and the Brazos Valley Juvenile Center have worked together to do some amazing things for some kids. And today I have Cornelius Gray and Lee Hill with, and Lee is with the Purple Turtle and she is the artist um, that works with the kids at the Juvenile Center. And Cornelius, um, we're gonna get to what you do in just a second, uh, but just to, for those people who have no idea what the Art for Life program is, it started back in 2008 um, and we've had probably about 200 teens have participated. And get this, 83% of those teens that are those participants in Art for Life have not returned back to jail. So that is just an amazing thing that art can do for some, some kids who are needing some help. So Cornelius, your job at uh, the Juvenile Center is what? Yes, so I'm the volunteer mentor coordinator. Um, I started back in 2014 um, and then I got promoted into this, my current position. Um, and my role is as far as the arts council, um, I get a group of kids together um, for the program during the summer. Um, and then I just super, help supervise the program and assist Ms. Hill with uh, the, the, the students um, and make sure they're attending on a regular basis and uh, things like that, and just coordinating things and making sure everything's flowing as it should. That is awesome. And that, I bet, takes uh, a lot of uh, time sometimes, I bet, to get everybody all on the same page and, and get all the kids wrestled up. Um, and so what Lee's going to do today, she's going to talk about some paintings that some kids have done just to, to give you guys an idea of some of the stuff that they do there. And one of the things that I love about Lee is she's going to be able to tell us her personal experience with each one of these kids. So I'm super excited to have Lee with us today. So Lee, tell me about this picture. Like, did they get to pick? Like, how does that whole process work? Well, in the past, we've uh, worked a couple different models. Uh, this, this group of paintings that we're about to look at was done last summer with our group and uh, instead of doing one large piece to be hung in a public space where the kids work together, they created individual pieces. Um, the, the, the Juvenile Justice Center has gone through a facelift and their family court area was just, um, it was all redone and nice and sparkly new, but it just wasn't as inviting as it could be. And we created a gallery. We created a gallery out of the children's art. So oh, they... Um, they each picked an image that spoke to them. And then we worked through the process of teaching them how to uh, manipulate the art and learn how to incorporate it, the elements of art within a piece of their choosing. Wow. So with this piece of art, what, what changed in the artist from the beginning to the end of this piece? Did you notice any kind of change or... Uh, yes. So this this young lady and Cornelius, I don't know if you remember like how much paint is on that canvas. Like <laughs> that that canvas has so much paint on it, and they picked some images online that they mm -hmm. uh, that they were just drawn to. But this this piece, this young lady did not have any experience painting, so we just get them going and start get them comfortable. And um, with just with with using the tools, and then she just kept layering the paint. And when when she wasn't sure about something, she would just put another coat of paint on, which uh, is something that I often say that you know just let's just begin, let's just begin somewhere and start putting the paint on. And she, you saw her style as soon as she felt comfortable mixing paints and using them. Her style was to lay this paint on so very thick and impressionist style. Um, it's lovely. If you get up close, if you ever get a chance to see this painting, it's, it has just so much texture on it. I can, I can see a little bit of the texture now. Wow. That is, mm -hmm. that is awesome. But in that, and she, most things, you just got to get started. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes, and you could see how she was getting comfortable because you have to be pretty comfortable with uh, with the medium to to be like, you know what, I'm just going to put a bunch of paint on here, mm -hmm. and and she did. It's it's great to see. It's quite empowering for the for the participants as they if they as they move through the process. Oh wow. Okay, let's move to the, the next one. This one is super bright. Yes, uh, it, another young lady, and she was just, she was really drawn to the flower. And uh, a really interesting thing about this participant is that she started with a different piece and it was, it was just, she was coming up after, uh, against an obstacle after obstacle. So I just took it aside and said, let's just pick something else. And um, just kind of letting them know, sometimes you just have to start over from scratch. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not a failure. That's just making adjustments and, and moving forward. I can't tell you how much I have changed in the past or how much I had to start over with little things and just big things. And that's, that's a good lesson to learn that it's okay to start over. Absolutely. So was she, was she happy with the final piece? Yes, very much so. They were all very proud when we had the reveal um, at the end of the summer. That is awesome. What about this one? This this kid just loved uh, mixing the colors. Um, had a hard time picking something and was not confident at all that they could even attempt a painting. And I don't know, Cornelius, if you remember uh, which student this was, but she uh just didn't think that she could, could she could paint at all so we we picked something that focused more on color and shape and um just made sure that it was something that she was gonna be successful at, at in the end right was she excited about it yes once she yes. saw she took a step back from it and looked at it she was like oh i actually like it it's actually pretty so yeah, she was pleased with it. And I bet her, 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 the way she looked at different things changed through that process, huh? Most definitely. That is awesome. I'm so glad y'all get to work with these kids. It's super fun. And I love these colors. It's very bright blue. I don't think this, I don't think this young lady knew that she had this in her. And I wouldn't be surprised if she's still finding an outlet for for her creativity because um, she slid right in to, uh, to this painting in with, with no trouble whatsoever and showed up every week for her time um, just with a smile on it, just uh, real excited about painting. And it's not always like that. Cornelius can tell you there's some of these participants uh, are, they don't really want to be spending their time doing this, but we, uh, we make them comfortable and we tell them, you know, this is, you're getting to come and, and do art for a couple hours. Uh, and, and, and they get to count this as their, as their community service. I right. think it's a pretty good way to do community service. Right. Um, and so, and, and they get to, to count those hours to beautify uh, public spaces. So um, it's real nice um, when we can see those kids that go from not wanting to participate to uh, learning something new uh, feeling empowered through that and enjoying their time. Um, but it's also really great to see the kids that always, all, you, you could tell that this might change their, their hobby or what they want to spend their free time doing because it's something that's already in them. Wow, that is awesome. So Cornelius, do you, do you remember uh, this young lady, how she, what she thought of this when it was all said and done? Yes, and she was another one that at first she was kind of like, oh, but once she just, you know, popped in her headphones, she's just, she just took it away. And we didn't really have to, you know, worry about her. She just took, took care of it and got it done. Well, that is so awesome. Ha, ah, loving this work. Oh, this one's kind of cool. This is, uh, is this charcoal or this what is, is this? This is my buddy. I love this kid and he did not, he, he did not really have a desire to paint. And I said, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to draw a car. And he, Ooh. and he had a picture of a car he wanted to draw. And I said, okay, well, let's do it in charcoal. And he had never worked with charcoal. And, um, I always have a kid that comes out of this, one of the participants that I pull into the studio and say, just come, come be my guest and, and continue with what you're doing. And he, he was able to come back for another semester and just take classes with me. And um, 
you can you can just see that confidence growing from spending that time perfecting a craft. And he he was so so very pleased with this piece. It's nice. It's real nice. It's great. It has great shading, and you can see the texture of how the how he's placed the the charcoal on the on the paper. It's it's gorgeous. Cornelius, do you remember this young gentleman? I do. Yeah, he. Um... Yeah, it was challenging for him at first, but once, you know, he started shading and coloring and redoing some stuff um, and it, it turned out great. And it also turned his interest into, hey, I want to do more. He asked Mrs. Lee, hey, can I come to your studio and, and do more? And she welcomed him with open arms oh, um, with that project. That's awesome. I, I just, I, I can see why this has 80% of all of the um, art participants have not returned back. I mean, what you guys are giving them and what they are learning and seeing in themselves is just, I don't even have the words to explain that. That is just fantastic. This is really cute. This is what a barn and blue bonnets, I guess blue bonnets were out during this. You know, art's for everyone, right, Cornelius? Yes, it is. <laughs> is this yours, Cornelius? Yes, that one's mine. I participated. Oh, nice. <laughs> and that's what I, I painted. And I was very pleased with it. Yeah. So he hopped right in and sat down with the kids. Cor I think Cornelius was the most excited about art every week. It's wonderful. I was. And that's the great thing about why I love the art program is because, you know, they see me, you know, helping them. Uh, they see me as a mentor. So I get to sit beside them and, you know, and do some of the things that they're doing. And uh, participating in, in this in the class really shows them like, hey, like if Mr. Gray can do it, I can do it. So um, and it just builds rapport. Um, it builds relationships with that with the uh, with the students, um, and they are more likely to open up and be more relaxed and chill. Wow, that's awesome! You did an amazing job on those blue bonnets. Thank you. Wow. So why did you pick? Why did you pick this one? I really don't know why I picked it. Um, it just looked like something I could do. Um, so I did it. <laughs> you did do it. You did a fantastic job. That is awesome. I've got, what did the kids say when you were done? Um, one kid didn't think that I actually painted it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they were pleased as well, just as well as me. One of the young ladies kept wanting to switch paintings with you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Switch with me, huh? You did my homework. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wow. What about this one? Oh, that was our big gentle giant. Do you remember him, Cornelius? I do. I do. Uh, look at him. You would not be like, okay, he did not paint that. He don't even look like he likes painting. He looked like he wanted ready to play football. <laughs> yeah. Huge guy. He was so quiet and he came in and you could tell he enjoyed painting every week and I don't think he had ever painted and he just jumped in and he and he enjoyed I think he enjoyed coming I mean he hardly said anything to us so he was real quiet oh wow so how so how did he do that on the barn like like it looks those little highlights like that looks like a, a special is that a special brush or 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 each I, one I think that that's a little ridge brush or a fan brush I I'm looking at this on my phone, so oh. I can't can't yeah. see. And, and it was last summer, but it was probably because we tried to make it look like paint, so like it was an old painted barn. So I think that it was a we used a ridge brush. It has like a denticulated end, so it it's, it leaves little gaps. Oh, that is awesome. So y'all, gentle giant, huh? He was. That cat was huge. <laughs> So quiet getting in there. So did he, did he speak, uh, did he get to where he talked more through the process or he just still? He spoke to some of the participants. He was just a really, he was just real quiet. Just a really quiet guy. That is, that is awesome. Ooh, a bowl of fruit. They did a fantastic job on this. Yes, this young man, just a little squirrely young man, wasn't he, Cornelius? He was. He was silly, silly kid. Uh, it just kept us laughing. And he, that kid had some talent. I was, you know, I would instruct him and we would keep him on track. But 
uh, and he started late. He jumped yeah. in the program late. Oh wow. oh, wow. Yeah, he did a great me correctly, he only attended like three or four of our uh, classes and he was able to pull that off. Yeah, I was impressed. Wow, that is awesome. So what changed in him from, from the start to the, to the end? What do you think, Cornelius? Um, I think with, with that young man, um, started with him just because, like I said, he had um, transportation issues because it was a little hard to get him to class. Um, but when, when he was actually there, we saw him open up. He was, you know, um, he, you can really tell he enjoyed it. Um, and he made everybody laugh and had everybody with a smile on their face. Um, so I feel like the program opened him, opened him up to where he can just enjoy himself and be himself. That's, that's awesome. So important to be yourself. Ooh, this was nice and bright. Yes, that, um, that young lady was real interesting and she was not wanting to really have anything to do with what we were doing and said that she could not paint and she uh, just didn't want to really be a part of it. And then um, we found an image that she wanted, she wanted to do this rose, just a line drawing that kind of looked like a tattoo. And then I said, well, you can do that. And, I, and she wanted to do this rainbow. And so she painted the rainbow. And then um, we, I think we projected that on there from an image she found that was a line drawing like that you would use for a tattoo art and we projected it onto the canvas and then she painted it from there so that's real interesting for the kids to see that you can combine different types of of media and technology to to create art and she was real pleased with it um and she ended up finishing this early and then she did another small piece uh, that she kept with her wow that's awesome she got to tell that she could just do anything. You just have to, to do something, huh? Yeah, we just wanted them to really uh, learn how to, uh, to manipulate the medium, uh, come every day, participate fully. And in the end, there's, there, there's no way you're not going to take something away from the program. And it's for me, for my side, and what I always say um, about working with different kids in different situations, you can, I call it their superpowers. They get these superpowers, these artistic superpowers that, that carry on throughout life, whether they're, uh, they always look at the world a little bit differently because they've been taught to, or whether they look at art differently because, because they've been taught to see art differently, or they have a, a, a new appreciation of, of art as far as a hobby, or even maybe going further in school to study art, you know, it's one of, one of the finer things. Let's teach our, teach our young people to enjoy those finer things. So they're reaching out for those outlets. For sure, that's super, super important. And you do have to be taught that. Some people, I, I think, um, can take that and do more with it when they've been taught than to um, just go through. Does that make sense? It's almost like a different difference between watching somebody go through a museum that they know a lot about and then someone who doesn't know anything and then you see so much more once you're educated on that particular item. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to, you have to learn how, how to look at the world around you to be mm -hmm. able to appreciate it fully. And this, this, uh, this participant, this young man, he, um, he did not think that he was going to do, he was really down on himself. He had very low self-esteem as far as creating and he did a great job. We, we really, uh, Cornelius and I had to like hold this kid's hands practically uh, and walk him through. And um, oh, he was one of, he was one of the harder uh, participants that we've had just because he really was down on himself about, and about participating in this. And um, these kids are, they, they really worry about failure, which is one of the great uh, reason, one of the reasons that it's so great that, that uh, Mr. Gray hops in and sits alongside of them, because if he's going to be vulnerable and put himself in that situation that, you know, it, it makes it easier for them to do it too. And uh, in the end, he was very pleased. And when we have the reveals, um, last summer, we had this reveal that was at the center 
they, they invite their, their family and friends and we have, um, you know, a full spread of food and it's, it's really celebrated with the media there. And they, he was very proud. They were all very proud. Yes. That is very nice story. Ooh, this one's kind of neat. Oh, that's, uh, goodness. It's I haven't seen these. I haven't seen these in a while, and I remember who this is now. Um, this is Houston. That's the skyline. Is the Houston skyline? And oh, wow. I don't, I don't feel, think this this kid would have ever picked up a paintbrush if he hadn't been with us. He was, it, he was very pleasant. A lot of fun to work with, but uh, it was it was real interesting um, walking him through the steps. He had zero previous knowledge of of painting or color or anything. And he just jumped right in. He was a lot of fun. He was very pleased in the end. Wow, well, look at that skylight. That is, wow. I never have to pick up a, a paint, man. That is, he did a fantastic job. So what changed in him from the beginning to the end? Uh, Mr. Gray, you think that he was, I, I remember that he was, um, not as tentative and he was just moving forward and making choices on his own by the time we finished this piece like towards the end which just is that self-confidence making choices right and he and he's the type of um young man that he he likes to be in control um so he he told Ms. Lee what he wanted she found it for him and he just you know went from there and um she she helped him when when needed but other than that he just got it done wow. That is awesome. Great work. Woo, this one's kind of cool. It has all kinds of different, is that like letters or? Yeah, some letters in there. Um, yeah, he put letters. <laughs> it could be some kind <laughs> of like street art or something. Yes. It's really kind of cool. It is street art and this cat kept us laughing like crazy. I, if, and we said it often, I said, you, you have a future in art, but you, and I have to like make myself not say his name. This, he was so funny, so funny. He would show up with this Michael Jackson uh, faux leather jacket on and always <laughs> with a story. He was telling a story one time about these dogs chased him on a bicycle when he would go to the, the corner store. And I was crying, laughing so hard. He was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. He really enjoyed coming he, a lot. Oh, wow. That is awesome. I could tell he did something for you guys because y'all are both glowing as, as y'all are talking right. about this kid. Oh my gosh. So I bet um, he, he touched you guys just as much as uh, y'all touched him. Absolutely. Uh, yes. So, I see the, uh, the, participants, the participant's okay. face. Um, when I look at the painting and it brings back those memories of um, where they started and, and how they ended. Um, and, and it just makes me laugh. It makes me so happy. That is awesome. So that is, those are all the paintings from, from last year and we're fixing it to go to the next slide that's going to talk about what you guys are doing this year. And this is after, after COVID, right? or not Wait, after, but after the shutdown and we're back into it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this went through, uh, we started right after the new year, I think. It, yes. I, yeah, you think so, Mr. Wright? So we started right after the new year and um, we just finished at the end of the summer. And this was, uh, these pieces, it's hard, it, you can't tell the scale of them, but they're each four foot square. Um, and they're on a, uh, a stretch, they're all in stretch canvases and they're nice deep. I think they're probably three inch uh, deep canvases. And these kids, we worked with a, a full group of kids and we also had their mentors that came. And that was a lot of fun. That was the first time we've done that, um, that you've all had the mentors and the kids together. That, that was really fun. And what we did with this is uh, they, we, we created these pieces to go above the intake desk. Isn't that where they're going? Yes, I believe so. So they're gonna be like 
portals to the outside. Um, like, like you're looking out at this beautiful sunrise and, you know, so much symbolism can go into that. And, uh, we began with the kids making a color wheel. Uh, the first year I didn't do that three years ago and realized that a lot of these kids did not know how to mix colors. So I thought, well, that's not, that's not working. So we always start with the color wheel and then we, I let them just tag the, the big canvases. So the first time after we did the color wheel, the first time we met after that, they just graffitied up anything they wanted just to kind of get them comfortable with putting paint on the canvas and understanding we're going to paint over this, but you're going to always have your mark underneath there. And you'll know that, 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 you know, you've, you've put something below here, you've hidden something under this paint. And then um, we created this horizon line with water and the, the rising sun through dripping the paint for months. We dripped the paint for months and months using these little pipettes. So we would turn it on that side and we would measure it off and the kids would mix the paint, water it down, and they would go and do each section to correspond with um, the colors that, we've, with, that we made. They really got into it and started, the cool thing is, is that you lead them, you lead them in, you lead them through, and then at one point they take over and they start making those decisions. And I know that that for Mr. Gray and I, that's the best part is when they take that ownership. And that's where you can really see, um, and I hate to like over the overuse of the word, but the empowerment that it, that it imparts on the kids in the end is just being able to take something from beginning to end and just having real pride in, in the finished product. No, I think that's fantastic. I don't, I don't know a better word than empowerment. Um, because I think that, um, I mean, just, I know within, within me, if I empower myself, you can do all kinds of things. And then when you rally it around a group of people like you guys, it just enforces that empowerment that they can do great things. Yes. And, um, that goes along with that 80%, 83% of all art for life participants have not returned back to jail. And I think that empowerment that they find while they're in this program is what keeps them going and headed in the directions and the best choices for them. Absolutely. I, I think that's a fantastic um, word of empowerment. And so how, all right, so who came up with this design? Like how did... The, the design for this one, um, we, I was, we were meeting, trying to figure out what we were gonna do. And I'm, I, I'm not real sure, it might've been me. <laughs> but I've been wanting to do this. <laughs> a lot of times I get to, I get to kind of throw in, you know, the next crazy thing that I'd like to, to do within, you know, whatever program or whatever project that I'm, that I'm working on. And I am, I, I loved this project and everyone that came into the studio and saw it, they're like, tell me what is this? I want to know what these are because they're, they're stunning. You can't, you can't get a grasp of how beautiful they are from from the photo they're just it's just lines of paint on top of lines of paint and there's texture and there's bubbles where where it the air built up as they were pushing them out of the pipettes and they burst um they're just they're beautiful pieces and they are so so large they're just stunning wow that is awesome mm -mm -mm. Wow. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, for taking the time to go through this, but I'm going to go through a few things that are happening at the Arts Council and we'll, we'll wrap this up. So what we have going on in our studio right now is Danica. Danica actually was one of our artists in residence about, oh gosh, I think like five or six years ago. And now she has come back and um, has her artwork displayed here at the Arts Council and just amazing artwork from all the national parks and you could really see the difference. Um, she was telling me some stories about what she thought of art when she first started and then when she went through the a residence program and how much it helped her get ready for her next stage and she has become a phenomenal um, artist because of that. And then we also have our Heroes of COVID 2020. We have a couple of nurses who have um, paid in our Heroes, a really nice exhibit in our 
College Station Lobby. And then also we are having a virtual silent auction September 21st through the 29th because we were unable to have our Celebrate the Arts. And that's one of the ways that we gather funds so we can support the many programs that we have just like Art for Life. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll be posting it all through social media and we've got some fantastic items. And so we're wrapping this up. We couldn't have done this program without the help of uh, the Brazos County and um, the Texas Commission on the Arts. They are the ones that help support this program with matching donations and man, between Brazos County and the Texas Commission on the Arts who know the difference and see the difference that has done in these kids. Um, we can't do that with without their support and our our local donors also who contribute to this program. Um, is there anything that you guys can think of that y'all wanna leave with that somebody might want to know or, or doesn't know about this program? Oh, well, I would like to say, um, just thank, I would like to thank the Arts Council for um, giving us the funds in order for us to do this with these kids because I see tremendous growth from start to end and that's what I love about my job and what I and what I do as the volunteer mentor coordinator is the growth that you that I see within the, the program that the kids um, that the kids do. And Ms. Lee for having such great communication skills with the kids. I don't even have to do nothing when I when I go. I just let her take care <laughs> well, that's of not true. I don't. <laughs> if there's an issue, she she talks to them in a nice way and they're and they're chill. And it's just like I don't even need to be here. But um, yeah, so just thank um, the Art Council and Lee for, for what you guys do in, in serving the kids and serving the community um, because it truly makes a difference. I agree, I agree. And I always look forward to, uh, to being a part of this program every summer and um, can't wait to get to work with Mr. Gray every time we get together. We, I know the kids can tell that we, enjoy what we're doing and it rubs it rubs off on on the whole on the whole program it's just a, it's a good time and we're doing good things and it's sponsored by good people like the arts council and the and the county and the tca and we appreciate it well this program would not be what it is without you two and um i think it's that um gosh y'all's inner your inner love and compassion for these kids and you just take them up like they're your own and show them what empowerment can do for them and y'all are just doing some amazing things and i'm looking forward to seeing the next group of kids go through and what all happens with them so thank y'all very very much for all that you do thank you